Hi guys, Lunar here. Welcome back to another brand new mods video, where we look at new mods each day, but also some upcoming mods each day for Skyrim Special Edition, since there are usually not enough mods to cover for brand new mods. Before we start, don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoy, and follow me on Twitter as well to see the current mods I have installed. Anyway, let's jump into the first mod. Our first mod today is an awesome mod actually called Four Shields Tavern. It's been out for a while on Xbox, but was released today for PS4. The mod is quite simple, but makes some big improvements to the Four Shields Tavern in Dragon's bridge. The inspiration for the tavern's new feel is that of a city right in the middle of two war-torn territories, Dragon's Bridge being right on the edge of both Imperial and Stormcloak holds. So it's a dangerous place to live and the mod author wanted the tavern to more reflect that fact. The tavern has been completely overhauled, everything is new looking and also there is more of a dragon theme as well. So the mod looks good, obviously uses vanilla assets so it's not too modded looking, but tries to make the place more immersive and overall it's a very cool mod. Our next mod is called Carriage Guards. The mod author made this mod as he found it a bit strange that despite Skyrim being plunged into civil war, with bandits at every corner and dragons roaming the land, that the carriage drivers are perfectly happy sitting around on their carriages all day without any form of protection. Many NPCs claim that they don't use the roads anymore as they have become too dangerous, and surely carriages would be prime targets for attack. We even see many sack carriage targets on the roadside. So this mod, like the previous mod, tries to add more immersion to the game and its civil war by adding in carriage guards to accompany each of the carriage drivers on their travels. So the new guards, they simply stand there looking imposing and won't say much, but they will protect the carriage drivers at all costs. Each guard is equipped differently depending on the relative danger of the region that they guard. For example, Whiterun's guard is equipped in light armor with a bow, whereas Markarth's guard is an orc who has heavy steel armor and a war hammer. Overall, a cool mod. It's only for Xbox One right now, but I don't see any reason why this one can't be added to PS4 at some point. Our next mod is called the Reinforced Ebony Armor. This one has been out for a little while but was updated to the latest version yesterday. The new armor is based off of the Ebony Armor, but it's a standalone armor with custom textures, so it's inspired by the Ebony Armor and looks similar, but it isn't quite the same. As you can see the difference is, it's kind of a chrome color as well. The mod author has not provided any info on the armor, but here is what I could find out. It's found on a battle in Dragon's Reach next to the enchanting table, and is the armor and helmet. It's only in two pieces, but the armor consists of boots and gauntlet as well. In terms of stats, the armor itself without the helm is equivalent to a full set of Daedric armor. If you include the helm, then you get an extra 66 armor rating, which is what the helm provides. The armor cannot be improved at the workbench, however, but it can be enchanted. It supports male and female and beast races as well. So I think that's pretty much covers everything you need to know, and overall this makes a really cool ebony armor replacer. Our next mod is a work in progress mod, which can which you can install now if you want them our next mod is a work in progress mod which you can install now called the Campers Workbench. The mod is described as Hearthfire for the Campfire mod, so it does the following stuff. The Campers Workbench lets you build a crafting station using some of the materials as Hearthfire. You will need bellows, hammer and tongs for the set of camper tools that is required to build most things at the workbench. With a saw you can harvest lumber at the saw horse to produce a sawn log, just like one of the lumber mills. With a woodcutter's axe you can chop dead wood into firewood at the wood chopping block. The large sack beneath your workbench provides safe storage for materials and everything else. You can also build a bloomery furnace from nothing more than clay and quarried stone. This primitive iron smelter uses the heat of roaring campfire to refine iron ore into ingots and craft the essential tools you will need for the workbench. So essentially it's a cooking pot for iron ore. When you're ready to break camp and move to a new location, you can pick up your crafting station and take them with you. If you're overburdened, you can recycle them into their essential parts and rebuild them whenever you arrive at your new destination. You will find the lore book explore guide to crafting at the Guardian Stone southwest of Riverwood, along with some of the essential materials you'll need to create your new camper's workbench. So overall, a very cool mod. Our final mod is the Medieval Inspired Weapon Pack. The mod adds a bunch of new types of weapons to the steel category at the forge inspired by real life medieval weapons. The mod includes the following stuff. You get a steel baton, three types of battle axe, three types of new dagger. You get 11 new steel greatswords, some of which have custom scabbards, 3 steel maces, a steel scimitar, which is really cool looking, 13 new steel regular swords one handed, 1 new war axe, and 1 new steel war hammer. All the weapons have been added to the leveled list as well as the forge and can be enchanted and improved at the grindstone like any other weapon. Overall, a very cool immersive weapon mod. 
Well, that's about it for this video. If you enjoyed, leave a like and comment. I really do appreciate it. And subscribe and turn on notifications for more daily updates and guides for Skyrim and other games each day. But with that being said, guys, stay awesome. And I will see you all next time.